Hey guys, how are you? When I say the enemy did not want someone specific to hear this word, to hear this message, like I can't even stress enough just how much trouble I went through just trying to get you this message, this word. I've had this word for about three to four days. The reason why I held on to it was because one, I wanted to get more additional details from God. I wanted to pray about it more. And so I usually wait and let God, like, sometimes he'll add in things. Sometimes he'll tell me, like, additional things. And sometimes he'll even show me, like, the face of the person, a name or something like that. So I already had the word. I just wanted to wait a little bit. But what ended up happening was the days where I'm like, okay, I'm going to deliver the word. I started to feel really sick. And I started to feel really nauseated and I had a headache. And then... You know, when I did, when I felt like, okay, I'm not going to deliver the word, this specific word, I start to feel better. And I'm like, what the heck is going on here? So the same thing happened to me yesterday. I was supposed to deliver this word and I started feeling really sick. And then today I delivered the other two words. I wasn't feeling sick when I delivered the other two words. But later this afternoon, right, God nudged me to deliver this specific word. And then I started feeling sick again. And I actually started recording it and everything. And then I was getting all these interruptions, all these distractions. And then I just said, you know what, God, I'm going to deliver it tomorrow. And I waited. And the Holy Spirit told me, no, like, you need to get this word out today. He literally just told me to get the word out today. And I'm like, I'm not going to leave and get back in my house until I get this word to this person. But the Holy Spirit was showing me that the reason why it was so difficult to get you this word is because the amount of warfare that you are going through it's like the enemy did not want you to get this word because what i'm gonna say is gonna make so much sense but not only that but it's actually going to give you almost like a map it's almost gonna give you like the confirmation that you've been looking for and praying for and like yeah it's gonna give you like a map to like under a map of understanding you know what it, what you need to do next and how you have to approach every single arrow that has been aimed and that is going to be aimed at you okay but none of them are gonna prosper Whew. this is a wow all i have to say is god is bringing you to the next chapter of your life there is a door that is gonna open that nobody can shut there is a door that's gonna open that is gonna be different from all the doors that you've gone through okay and this is gonna change your life all right here's the thing the enemy does not want you to prosper people around you do not want you to prosper okay and the thing about it is no one can shut this specific door that god is gonna open other than you and how would you shut the door by self-sabotaging by being disobedient okay by responding and reacting the way how god does not want you to respond and react this has been a problem for majority of your life i'm going to show you what god showed me you were bullied for majority of your life you were put down for majority of your life okay and you know this happened a lot since your childhood you did not have anybody there to defend you you did not have any there to anybody there to protect you let me give you an example of this so Imagine being a child and you see other children at school. They have their sister. They have their brothers. When they would get bullied and people would pick on them, their brothers would come. Their sisters would come. Even their parents would come. You see what I'm saying? You never had anyone to fend for you. Even though you had family, nobody was there to fend for you. Even when you, though you had some friends, they didn't fend for you. Nobody was really there for you. So growing up, it's like you had to be silenced. You had to be silenced from people and you were silenced from people. You see what I mean? And what ended up happening was in your adult years, you are very defensive. You clap back. You may even snap back at people. It's like you have a hard time, you know, containing yourself when it comes to how you respond to people. And when it comes to, you know, responding in a graceful manner you have a hard time containing yourself when it comes to that because you have been taught your whole life to fight for yourself you have been taught your whole life to fight back why because you have been bullied since you were a child you have been put down since you were a child it's like now that you're an adult you are the you feel like you're the only person that will really stick up for you right but here's the thing you found god now you found god god is with you but he's trying to show you a different approach on how to 
you know handle situations because let me tell you something because of these years where you have finally stuck up for yourself you have spoken up you have snapped back at people you have clapped back at people and what ended up happening was people looked at you like you are the aggressor they looked at you like you're aggressive like you have too much attitude all this type of stuff right so because people looked at you this way i'm gonna actually i have to put this thing up on my phone so i get no interruptions Whew. when i tell y'all it was hard for me to get this word out <laughs> the way people looked at you was like you're the aggressor and what people didn't understand was that you were provoked you were provoked people would poke at you see people always saw your response but they never saw what led to that they never saw what led to that you were provoked a lot of times and people never believed you okay and it's almost like people were trying to set you up in a way okay so because of this way of handling things it has caused you to you know self-sabotage specific opportunities where you may have had a business and you were not the most nicest to customers because of how they were speaking to you you may have clapped back or snapped back at them um it could be you know working at a job you may have gotten fired whatever it is i just know when god was showing me was you lost a lot you lost a lot right and he even showed me something relating to bankruptcy so he showed me you lost a lot okay now here's the thing you have finally realized like you know you're starting to see you're starting to use your discernment you're starting to see how the enemy was trying to set you up to make yourself look bad and how the enemy was using people to set you up to make you look bad because you know people wanted to call you the aggressor they wanted you to look like the aggressor even though a lot of these people provoked you they poked at you they poked at you they manipulated you similar to how a narcissist will poke at someone consistently and then as soon as a person's about to respond based on what was done to them they will pull out their phone and start recording and get that get their response on camera and then post it publicly and make everybody judge that person based on what they're seeing on on the video and people are not understanding what led to that you get what i'm saying so that's the kind of setup that you had to fight your whole life god wants you to approach things differently let me tell you why The type of warfare you're fighting is heavy. Let me just say that. Very, very heavy. But let me tell you something. You're going to make it. You're going to get through it. You are. Because the type of resistance, the type of fight that I had to go through just to get you this video, I'm telling you right now, there's so many people that are waiting for you to fail. There's so many people that don't want to see you succeed. They don't want to see you win. There's a lot of people who are waiting and this is why they poke at you. This is why they provoke you. Because let me tell you something. A lot of these people, they don't like the fact that God has picked you. They don't like the fact that God has a plan for you. They don't think you deserve it. But you do. You do. People don't understand what you've been through. People misunderstand you. And they purposely misunderstand you. They go out of their way to misunderstand you. You can be in a situation where somebody put their hands on you. Somebody slammed the door in your face. Somebody may have spoken about your child. And as soon as you snap back and you talk back to them or you yell at them or you whatever it is that happened, you cussed at them, you are looked at as the aggressor and people will sit there and blame you even though that person did, did something wrong and provoked you. You are very misunderstood and you've been misunderstood since you were a child. The Lord wants you to approach things differently. The reason being is because the Lord is going to restore you. What you lost, he's going to give you more than what you lost. He is going to give you more than what you lost. He has shown me that. Okay? But the way you handle things, he wants you to change the way you approach things. And he understands that it's hard we understand it's hard because a lot of us for us to get to a place of grace and for us to be able to handle things in a graceful manner and to not snap and a lot of us have to go through these changes too so it's not just you you see what i'm saying but what it is is you have not started the full assignment when it comes to these changes as yet what i mean by that is there's a difference between saying god i want to change 
I don't want to be snapping at people no more. I don't want to be cussing at people no more. I don't want to be angry all the time no more. I don't want to always clap back at people no more. There's a difference between saying it and actually meaning it. As in like your heart really does not want to do that anymore. Like you're literally going to fight the resistance. You're really going to fight, not the resistance, sorry. You're going to fight the urge to always clap back, to always talk back, to always do that. You're going to fight the urge to do that, right? God is going to restore you. But here's the thing, the types of rooms that God is going to take you in, he does not want you to be responding this way. Reason being is because you're going to be a representation of him. Okay, he understands that we're not perfect. He understands that we get upset and all of that. But he wants you to learn how to take things to him through prayer behind closed doors and to weep and cry to him rather than publicly and snapping back at people, cursing at people, yelling at people and, you know, and attitude. Because let me tell you something. This is what these people want to see. They want to see that you're aggressive. And the reason why they want to see that is so they can they can feel confident in how they view you. And they can feel confident in putting you down. There's people out there that know that you have been done wrong. They know that people have went out of their way to sabotage you and hurt you. And that your response is based on that. Yet, they still choose to say you're the aggressor and you're the bad guy. You know why? Because a lot of these people want the life, want the purpose that God is going to give you. They don't want you to feel like you deserve it. So God does not want you to give these people any type of thing to say about you. He wants that when these people try to look down upon you, they can't find anything to say about you because you know what? You're living blameless. You're living blameless as in when someone's yelling at you, you don't even yell back. When someone's swearing at you, you don't swear back. When someone's slandering you, you don't slander back. You see what I'm saying? Like he wants it to be when people do these things to you, they're not getting a response out of you. If anything, they're getting prayer out of you. They're getting I forgive you out of you. They're getting a whole different type of response. You are, you are going to be a class on your own. And that's what they need to see. Because the rooms that God is going to take you in, you cannot snap. You cannot react the way that you're used to reacting. He is trying to take you out of one situation and he's trying to elevate you to a whole nother situation. But the other, the other, sorry, the other level that he, where he's trying to take you, it requires discipline self-discipline it requires knowing when to speak and knowing when not knowing when not to speak it requires discernment it requires representation it requires responsibility it requires a whole lot of responsibility so in order for him to take it to that level he is trying to teach you from now so everything that you've been going through these are all tests these are all trials and tribulations but they're training you for where he needs to take you but even though you're going through trials and tribulations and tests you cannot sit there and you know fail every assignment because then how are you going to get to the next level you have to at least try on your assignments and you have to at least get past a certain mark so you can pass the whole course and head on into the next level do you get it it's similar to school you know you have to have a specific you know overall grade in order for you to pass that course for you to be able to head on to the next level you know what i mean it's the same concept you can't always be failing a test and always be like okay god i feel that i'm sorry i'm not gonna do it again and then next week snapping at someone and you really have to try he wants you to try he knows you can do it he knows you can do it. And you have to understand there's so much people that, you know, purposely choose to misunderstand you because they know that you're a good person deep down. They know that you've been through trauma. They know that God is working on you. 
but they don't want to give God that credit. They don't want to give you that credit because they don't want to see you elevate and surpass them. That's what it is. They want to prove so badly that the purpose that God has given you, they deserve it. They should get it instead of you. They want to prove so badly that you're never going to change. They want to prove so badly that you are just, you know, who people say you are. That's what they're trying to do. And God is trying to silence them. But God also needs you to start doing the work. To start doing the work. You have to remember something. When Jesus was healing people and casting out demons, the Pharisees tried everything to find fault in him. It's to the point where they even tried to twist his words. You know? To try to frustrate him, upset him. They would ask him the same questions in different types of ways to try to catch him in a lie. And you know what Jesus would do? He would always respond with grace, humbleness, gentleness, purity. He wasn't disrespectful. And they were all looking for him to be this way. Because they wanted to prove so bad that no, he's not the son of God. He's not who he says he is. Look, look how he's acting. Look how... He that's the example I'm giving you because that's what people are trying to do to you. The more you get frustrated because someone's trying to twist your words on purpose and you have to clap back, they're going to twist your words even more when you clap back. Sometimes you got to let people just speak and say what they want to say. And when they see that they're not getting any response out of you, they're going to continue and continue and continue and continue to try to make you look bad to the point where they can't even keep tabs on how much lies they told about you. They expose them themselves. That's what you got to do. You got to let people do that to themselves sometimes. You got to just keep quiet and let them do that. And I understand it's frustrating when you got to keep quiet and watch people lie on you. Watch people provoke you. Purposely misunderstand you. Purposely twist your words and not say anything. It's frustrating. But can I tell you something? The Holy Spirit is very strategic. God is very strategic. He knows exactly how to make these people eat their own words. He knows exactly how to make these people choke on their own tongues. He knows exactly how to make these people fall into their own ditches. You see what I'm saying? The same ditches they dug for you. He knows how to make them fall into these pits. Right? But all of that takes time. All of that takes strategy. And this is why God says it's important to be wise, to be humble, to be discerned. Because time heals but also reveals. And over time, people will see people's true colors and true characters. You see what I'm saying? Because character reveals itself over time. No matter how fake a person is, character reveals itself over time. You get what I'm saying? And not only that, but the more you start to actually pull back and say, God, I'm not going to say nothing. I'm not going to say nothing. I'm not going to I'm not gonna let that provoke me. And the more you start doing that, it becomes so natural that, you know, when you see someone talk about you, you just look at them. You may like chuckle and just block and delete them. That's it. It becomes so natural. You don't even care no more. You get what I'm saying? Like, man, it's not even worth my time and energy. When you get to a certain place in your life to where you know you fought so hard to get there and you know it took a lot of work to get you in that position, to get your mindset to that place, you're not going to let anybody come in and jeopardize all the hard work that you did. It's almost like, let me give you an example. It's like when you're, when you're celibate. When you're not celibate, abstinent, sorry. When you're abstinent from sex for a very long time. In the beginning, it may have been very hard. But once you're like a year in, two years in, three years in, four years in, five years in, and you realize your discernment's on point, you're not even as tempted as you were in the past because you've been on this journey for so long. You won't even let anyone that isn't even worth, you know, being around you touch you. You won't even let anyone touch you. It's almost like you're not going to jeopardize all those years for some for any just anything you're gonna wait on who god wants you to be with because you realize like you went all these years and fought all these you you were so resist resist no you were so strong not resistance but you're so strong for so many years it's like you're not even gonna ruin that for nothing and that's what i mean when i say when you start applying you know specific characteristics or specific strategies that god gives you in the book of Proverbs and James and Timothy and Peter, when you start applying this to your life and you're doing it consistently, it becomes an everyday thing where you don't even have to think about doing it. You see something, you know exactly how to handle it because why? Your heart's changing. You're noticing now you're moving upright. You're moving with discernment. 
You see what I'm saying? Your spirit is calm regardless of what's around you. Your spirit's at peace regardless of what's going on. And it comes naturally. And before you know it, you're like, wow, I, I've been doing this for so long. Like, I'm not even going to snap over something as small as that. Like, you, your mindset starts to get to that place. Whereas before, you may have not had that type of control or discipline because you're always so fast to react. And that stems from childhood trauma. That stems from being misunderstood when you're a kid. That stems from being bullied a lot. That stems from, like, all the things that you've endured. But... You know, breaking that cycle means discipline, passing the test, you know, thinking before speaking, things, thinking before doing things. And I always tell people, like, people that have nothing to lose or nothing to look forward to, they'll be the first ones trying to poke at you, trying to provoke you. People who have so much to look forward to and who are excited about what's to come and who have things going for themselves trust me they don't have time to be tearing nobody down putting someone down trying to provoke someone trying to block someone trying to twist people's words trying to misunderstand people on purpose they don't have time to be doing all that they're too busy they're too focused on their calling they're too focused on their purpose they're too focused on their tunnel vision they don't even get caught up in gossip and drama like they're so busy they're, they're, there's just too too much going on for them for them to be caught up in things like that so if you have a lot going for you and you have things to look forward to, which you already do know that you do, why would you let anybody come in your life or why would you let anybody manipulate you into responding and presenting yourself as something that you're not? Don't even give them that satisfaction because there's a lot of people around you that are waiting for you to slip up. They want to see you fall. And I'm not just saying that this, like, as in for you, this, a lot of us are going through. There's people waiting for me to fall. They're like, oh, she ain't as nice as she says she is. They're always looking for things to purposely misunderstand me for or twist my words. And they can never let me be, become something that I'm not because I work too hard to keep my heart upright. I've been through too much to turn cold okay my life was almost taken from me that humbled me okay that's what i'm trying to say like these people will sit there and they're waiting and when they can't find something they will create something and you know why they create something because they want you to respond if you're not gonna do anything just out of your natural true nature to prove their point they're gonna create something to provoke you into proving their point do you get it? And that's what I'm trying to say. Like, you just have to know, okay, God, I see what they're trying to do. And once you understand this, remember that what God has for you is not worth losing over people that don't even know what they want in their life, that don't even love themselves enough to fight for their own purpose, focus on their own purpose. They don't even let themselves enough to leave you alone. They would rather get themselves into drama, turmoil. They don't even love themselves enough to present authenticity or integrity. They would rather make things up to try to provoke someone else. Okay? These are miserable people. Don't let them provoke you. Start clean and start from today. God is trying to change your attitude. The restoration is going to come, but the Lord said the type of doors that he's bringing you into, your attitude has to be clean. Your attitude has to be good because these are opportunities where it's going to change your life. You're going to be partnering up with some people who are going to help you, who are going to bless you. But you being a representation of who you used to be, these people will not want to be around that because they're already upright. They're already doing the work. God wants you to be a representation of who he called you to be, which is a representation of him, which is the fruits of the spirit. So when you get to that level, you are on you are in the same place, mentality, everything as these people who he's going to be using to bless you. He doesn't want you embarrassing yourself for especially for known people who trying to side they're trying to sabotage you that's why they're trying to provoke you that's why they're poking you they're poking you and pulling out their cameras to record you not literally i'm just using it as an example that's what they're trying to do okay let people say what they want to say let them talk god knows how to vindicate his children god is very strategic 
on how he does things. And trust me, when it's the right time for you to talk and God tells you, okay, now it's time to speak up, you're going to be so shocked at how you handle things and the wisdom that comes out your mouth, the grace that comes out your mouth. People are going to be so shocked. They're going to choke on their tongues. They're going to swallow their own words. That's what's going to happen. Okay, so I want to just give someone as confirmation. Present yourself very gracefully in every situation. Sleep on things. When someone says something to you or texts you something, instead of responding right away, go to sleep. Sleep on it. The next day, you're not going to feel like responding. You're going to be like, man, I'm glad he's saying nothing. Sometimes silence is better. You see what I'm saying? People can't twist your words when you're silent. They can't provoke things. They can't twist things. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, God is going to do some things in your life. He truly is. He's trying to fix that attitude. Okay. I love you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.